Hi, this is John with the Despair Group. In this video, I will be describing for you the user interface output of the GNU radio program spectrometer with Cal that we use with our horn radio telescopes. You can see I have a horn set up, pointing up at the sky, of course. Feeds into the computer, and on the screen here, you'll see the spectrometer with Cal canvas before we run the program. When we run the program, the first window that pops up will be what I'm showing here and it is uh, showing the the graph of signal versus frequency and that's the spectrum we want to be uh, studying. Looks pretty flat here there might be a little bump here and so we're gonna I'm gonna describe for you briefly some of these features. The first thing that we have here on the left is the Y min and Y max since we're kind of down, I can zoom in a little bit. Okay, and you can see that this feature here seems to be getting a little bigger. I can even zoom in with my uh, minimum there. The ver various display options I have here are shown in this box. Right now it's on filtered spectrum with no calibration. That's the most common box you could use or the spectrometer with calibration, which is the second box that box is what you'd be displaying after doing a hot calibration and cold calibration. I will not be discussing those in this video. Uh, the option at the bottom, the unfiltered spectrum, is just that. It is unfiltered and if you uh, see here it also has a couple features that we didn't see in that first graph and that is that we have this sloping up thing here and then this big peak at the end. Those are artifacts of the digital signal processing system and when I'm showing the spectrum to my students those tend to be a distraction so I like to eliminate those. In addition it's nice to have a filtered spectrum so if I go back to the filtered spectrum with no calibration you can see that it's a lot smoother uh, and it also clips off the ends. Full and fuller clipped spectrum options are shown here the full spectrum just shows exactly that and you can see those distracting features reappear when I clip it they go away so that's the preferred screen I like to be looking at the um, integration time here can be adjusted with a short integration or long integration right now that short integration is 0.4 seconds if I click to the long integration which I think right now is set at 10 seconds you can see that the data is very much smoother uh, and that's real nice. This peak here is definitely noticeable now. If I, like, if I want to save the, my data, I have two options here. I can write continuously to a CSV file, so if I click writing the file, every time an integration occurs, that a file, the spectrum, will get output to a text CSV data file. This is useful if you're doing, say, a drift scan map, or if you want to do an observation but you can't be available when the object is actually going to be appearing. The other option you have is to capture the screen. If I pop this button here, I quickly will, it'll quickly write what's currently on the screen to a data file and that's also very convenient when you're doing certain types of observations. The graph on the far right here, this little what we call the system heartbeat, is actually a histogram of the input signal to the uh, GNU radio program and it's not really of importance to us other than the fact that uh, it's jumping around. If that signal uh, graph ever stops jumping around and it looks very still that means this program is probably not collecting data so that's not good. Other options I have here are this azimuth th uh, box, elevation box and anytime these are text box that I can enter values. For instance, if I'm at an azimuth of, say, 210 degrees, I, en I put it in, I have to hit enter. If I don't hit enter, it won't get recorded. Maybe I'm at elevation. Right now, it looks like I'm at about 80 degrees. And, uh, and then right now, I'm in Morgantown, West Virginia, at the University of West Virginia. So I type in Morgantown and hit enter. If, if I do that, when I capture, save my data by capturing it or writing to file, which it's doing right now actually, the, uh, these, this information appears in the heading 
of the, the file name, as, or in the file name itself, actually, as well as the timestamp. So those are very useful features. The only, the only other thing I'm going to mention right now is that there's another tab up here called System and Gain. These are useful when you're actually doing a, a calibration. I will be describing a calibration in a different video. Uh, but for most uses, what I've just described is, is what you need to know. See you at the next video.